as they say, you only study at university one time. So most people, for most people I know, they would only do one bachelor's degree. They would only do one master's degree. Most people only do one PhD degree. There are exceptions to this, but that's most people. And if you're doing it, you probably want to do it right. You don't want to go ahead with the overall process again, since first off, it's very costly. Second, it is time consuming. You don't want to go ahead and spend your whole life in university, right? You have to spend some time in the industry or in, of course, research positions, whatever you prefer as such, right? And in order to be able to do that, you probably want to get into the best possible university of all. Of course, the definition or the ranking of the best possible university differs from a case to case basis, but you would probably have some expectations, right? So here's a couple of reasons as to why you should transfer. And this is valid for anyone and everyone who's willing to make the transfer, even if you're going from your home country to the US or from within the US, you're changing your university. Both of these are completely fine and this video caters to both. So the top three reasons why I hear about transferring of universities is number one, of course, you get a better ranked university and you wanna move over there which is a completely legitimate reason. I don't blame you. Like I said, you only go to university once in most cases. The second, of course, is affordability. You get a university with a similar ranking or maybe your financial condition changes and sometimes you cannot afford something or you have a lot more finances to take care of now so you can afford something better. Well, that is also a major reason of the change. Number three is cultural discomfort. A lot of times what happens is people find themselves in places they're not comfortable. And that is completely okay. It's okay to feel that way. It's okay to actually transfer university if you're not feeling like you can stay in the environment that they have basically forced you into. So yeah, these are the biggest three reasons. Now, when can you actually make this transfer? First, it depends on your degree and your school's transferability rules. Basically, your current school, the one that you're in right now, no matter where it is in the world, right? In your home country or the US already, that has to agree to the transfer. Secondly, the school that you're going to write, that has to agree towards that transfer. They have to basically agree to taking you in. Both of these are rules that you have to take care of. You have to understand and you have to make sure that you are basically eligible. And the easiest way to determine whether you are actually eligible to make the transfer, at least from the current school that you're in, is by talking to your DSO, especially if you're already in a university in the United States. There's a designated school official that you would have as an international student. Go to them, talk to them about it, tell them that you're thinking of a transfer and ask them about the rules and regulations around the process. Now let's talk about who can actually make this transfer. First, undergraduate students. Within the four years that under undergraduate students take up, as good as 45% of the students have seen to be making a transfer. And it's fairly common in the United States. You don't need to worry about it. And you can make a transfer unlimited times, by the way. There's really no limit, but of course, you know, that's a hypothetical keyword when I say unlimited. At the same point in time, you do not have to involve the federal authorities in that. Hence, the schools can basically do the process amongst them. The federal authorities do not have to be involved. Of course, the I-20 and the transfer of the service fee will happen, but at the same point in time, right, it's, it's not really a major thing. You don't really have to basically get a whole new petition for the F-1 visa done, and you don't have to return to your own country, by the way. Of course, as long as your F-1 visa for the previous school has not been terminated, so never let them terminate that. Of course, point number two, graduate students do often change schools, but this is not as common as within the undergraduate cases. So yes, it happens, but it's just not as common. You will have lesser options, but you will be able to do it, by the way. If you're thinking of something of that sort, we can definitely make sure that it happens. And what kind of transfer are allowed anyway? So like I said, home country to the US, you can do that. From one US university to the other US university that you're interested in, that's also okay. Both of these are allowed, but please make sure that you understand the transferability process well, which is very important. And you know, we've dealt with hundreds of cases, I assure you that it's not as easy as it sounds. It's a little bit more complex than applying to schools for the first time. So how do you begin? If you've actually made up your mind that you would like to do the transfer, how do you actually begin? Now remember, there are exceptions to whatever I'm going to be telling you over here, but I'm telling you the general process, which works very, very well in 95% plus of the cases. 5%, there may be a little bit of a difference, so you may have to talk to your DSO about it. First, ensure that you meet the minimum requirements to actually apply to the your particular university that's your target school, okay? And there could be multiple target schools, that's okay. And if that's something that you have issues with, right, in shortlisting the right university for you, which is the best one or which are the best ones that you would like to go forward with, 
You can actually take up our support on ymgrad.com by going onto the Profile Evaluation and University Shortlisting Service page. We will actually build you a whole shortlist on an Excel sheet just like this one, where you'll be able to actually understand what's the best mechanism for you to move forward with. Of course, having a mix of ambitious, moderate and safe universities help, but depending on your situation, maybe you just want to apply to more ambitious universities, etc, etc. That process can certainly be customized as per your requirements. Second thing, you have to apply to that university, all right? In most cases, you have to apply normally only and you have to first get the acceptance, you have to get the admit. Then, of course, once you have the admit or even before that, a lot of times, people prefer to talk to their DSO, which is very important. This is almost as good as a mandatory step over here. Like I said, your DSO is your designated school official who manages you as an international student in the United States. So whatever you have to basically get done, changes on your I-20, et cetera, et cetera, that happens through a DSO. So they'll help you understand the transferability rules. Finally, you have to request for a transfer of credits. It's very important simply because whatever credits you have done from your previous school, right? You don't want to let them go to a waste because if you do, you have to start from scratch at your transferred school, which is not what we're looking for over here. If you start from scratch, you spend more money, you spend more time, which is again, not what we are looking for. Hence, make sure that you're able to transfer your credit. And remember, this is generally at the authority or at the hands of the dean, right? But whatever school you're going for, right? It's, it's, it's the target school that decides whether they will let you transfer your credits or not. So you have to show them that whatever you've done previously is actually matching with their particular curriculum so that they can actually let you have that transfer of credits. Of course, once that is done, you can quickly and very easily talk to your DSO about getting the service transferred and it's an easy process. In fact, we have also done it for a lot of clients under the visa application help. But like I said, it's easy and you can get it done through your DSO as well. Finally, you get the transfer certificate or the relieving letter, which by the way is not so easy to get again. Like I said, you have to show the university why you're moving, right? You have to convince them of it, right? You have to give them a good enough reason because they are actually going to be losing out on a student, right? A seat that they could have given to someone else. So that's money out of their pocket and you have to help them understand exactly why you are in the process of moving. And as long as you can do that, again, it's a little bit complicated, but again, we can help you with the same, we can train you, but at the end of the day, you're gonna have it in your hands. And again, as long as you have it, you can actually move on to the school of your choice. That's the final step. By the way, quick photograph over here for you guys, just in case you are thinking that graduate school applicants or masters, PhD applicants cannot really do this transfer, please take a look at this image from Northeastern University, which clearly states that graduates are allowed to do the transfer. All they have to do is first get the admit. And secondly, they have to fill out the credit transfer form online through which they're gonna be requesting the transfer of credits. Finally, be sure to check out ymgrad.com to understand which universities would be a good fit for you. You can, for instance, go on to any university's page, rate your chances to understand your chances over there, of course, and get some tips as well, depending on the profile that you signed up with. And of course, you can always get a lot more help directly through me if you would like. My number is going to be in the description. All right, make sure to follow us on Instagram where we have much more information just like this. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you're interested in further videos just like this one in your feed. Goodbye and take care for now. All the best for your transfer.